All right, guys, welcome back for another episode. I've got my good buddy Tyler and Larry here, and we're going to be talking about Xbox One's change in their DRM policy. Uh, let's start off with with you, Larry. What did you What did you think about the change in their DRM well, policy today? Are you going to be buying a Xbox One now? No, total garbage. Total garbage. Look, here's the deal. Been a loyal Xbox fan for a long time uh, because of you and you. Bought the Xbox over to PS2, though I had a PS1, you know, big. I was a big PS1 guy. Bought the Xbox, no complaints, loved it. Not the best system ever. But no complaints? I got a couple complaints, but okay. Red three, ring. I said the Xbox, man, not the 360. Okay. Well, then you got the power supply then in the back. Continuing on, yes, there was some hardware problems. I had to change mm -hmm. drivers many times from the, the Philips because, you know, remember it came, you either got the Samsung driver, the Philips driver, or the factory crap driver, and I kept getting the bad. Anyways, uh, 360, though, loved it, great system, tons of hardware problems, and so now we have the Xbox One, and I'm totally open to jump and ship. I want, uh, I don't want your box to control my living room. I don't want, I mean, I have a cable box that can do all that. I'm good. But that's, I, I don't that's the my, way it's going. Can though. I finish? Can yes, I, you can. Can I finish? Because that's the way it's going. I don't I don't mind having multiple controllers. I don't even mind having a Logitech controller that controls with a couple buttons and I press it and it's all done. I, what I do mind is when you are so bombastic and such um to come out and say as a company that guess what? You know, this is our product, it's so good, we know you're gonna buy it anyways. This is what we're gonna do. Always online, which I know the times, unless you live in like, you know, Wyoming in the middle of nowhere, you know. You're going to have internet connection, but still, the whole uh, video game trade-in stuff is terrible, and that's why I went with Sony. Now, to answer your question, the, for them to come out now and say, oh, we were just kidding, number one, and everybody's like, well, that's great, you know, the fans won. Okay, the fans won. You should have never did it in the first place, and I feel like you can't give in to the, <laughs> to the man. You can't give in just because they read the message boards. They saw the outcry. They knew they're going to lose customers. So, but that's the way it's going. All right, all right so, it's just like the Salem witch trials mm -hmm. all over again. You make it burn it at the stakes. All right, so so Tyler, you, obviously you have a differing opinion about just, all this. I'm just saying. Look, I don't know why everybody's against all this in the first place because that's where it's going anyway. Like, just because you don't want it all to happen at the same time, at like they're rushing it. But it's going to happen anyway. Yeah, I mean, it eventually, I'd say in the next five to ten years, we are going to be all digital. And I guess what they were trying to do was jumpstart us into that, where we would be... Which it was a pretty cool idea with some of the stuff they were going to do. They were going to... You were going to have like a friends list, I guess, on Xbox One, or I guess it was called Family, and you had have point? like a list of 10 people that you could share games that you purchased with. They could play games off your system, um, and, and that was... But what I didn't understand about that is if you're playing the game, most likely... Play it too? I don't think so. But I don't know. I, that, and that's canceling that, out 10 people that you would share games with. Well, and they didn't really explain it that well. And I, I agree, Larry. I think they probably should have announced this last week at E3, uh, especially after all the rumors had gotten out about people being against it always being online and all that. But, um, you know, they did go back and they obviously listened to the gamers and they took away the requirement for being having to connect online every 24 hours and um they also you know have said that they're going to support uh used game sales and there's no restrictions on it which is different from Sony's cuz Sony actually said that just their first party titles will be where you can trade them and and sell the Sony game store like uh, well I figure they will well, Monk, you, you tell about why it's big, It just in as far as military, why the military is concerned, since you're in the Air Force. Like, well, why is Xbox so big in the military? Well, the biggest thing about that is because when the Xbox One, or not the Xbox One, when the first Xbox came out, 
you had to land party as like everybody did anyway. And so they would buy those systems so they could land party it up over when they're deployed um, during their time off or whatever. So then Xbox 360 came out, and you got a little bit more of internet connection over there. Plus, you still can, uh, you know, play it over there like that. But then, if you take internet out of the equation, and you have to have internet on there to even start up the thing, then it's just a paperweight. And so then Xbox was about to have probably, I'd say, probably one fourth of their fan base go over the uh, PS4 that quickly. Well, I've because just, of the internet. I've just noticed today in the forums, a lot of people were like, okay, you know, now that they've taken that away, I won't get an Xbox One now. So, may I interject, gentlemen? <laughs> an, sure, analogy, an analogy for you, if you will. It was before World War II that Hitler promised Chamberlain he would not invade Europe. Chamberlain bought it, boys. He bought it. And then. What happened? <laughs> we invaded or the so you're, Nazis. You're let me wait. They Poland. Now let me explain. Right? Now, just because you say what the people want to hear does not change the heart of evil. And I'm just saying they're only making a statement because it's what you want to hear. You buy the product and they got you and they'll do whatever they want to do. PlayStation. Well, but the, the, you you hold on, hold on, hold on. Nintendo and PlayStation come together to make the Nintendo disc drive and PlayStation gave the finger up to Nintendo. Well, That's evil. Well, see, right. now here's here's oh, where Larry's problem is. Larry was only getting one system to begin with. Me and Tyler were probably going to get both anyways just for the exclusives because we both have PS3s and Xbox 360s. But the thing I was worried about, and I love Xbox's controller. I mean, it's the best controller out there. PS3's controller to me is just subpar. I, but I, I think the reason why you're saying that is because you play more Xbox, so therefore... Well, I do, but to me it's a more sense. comfortable game. Like, I'm playing The Last of Us right now, and it's just it's too small, and it doesn't have the heft that the 360 controller has, and I don't know, I just like it. Well, well, you want the original Xbox controller. Oh, that I that. You <laughs> can't say it's so far if it basically has not changed since the PS1, and we all know how many units they sold to the PS1. Well, and and, two, and the new it's Xbox so controller won't change from the 360. Right. So I, 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 mean, I love the Xbox controller, don't get me wrong, but... It's a good controller. Know. Gentlemen, I, th I think we're just we're, we're we're dancing around the subject here, which is yes, we've all been Xbox fanboys. We we love the 360. I, you know, rest in peace whenever its time ends. But just because we're fans of your uh, latest systems does not mean that you give in. Because I, but but they did listen to the consumers. I mean, if, if mm. we're going to hold a grudge, I mean, I, I and me and Tyler were very vocal about saying. Since they did this, we were going, and we still held out hope. We thought that they probably would change it, and thank God they did. Can but I ask we, you a question? But we still held out hope, you know, that they were going to change it because that was our system of choice. Can I ask you a question though? Yes. Don't don't you both? And I got to wrap this up. Hockey's on. Don't you both feel that? It, hey, hey, don't you both feel? that we're not quite there yet. And let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Last night, I'm on Xbox Live, right, playing Minecraft. Now, this never happens, and it very well probably isn't the Xbox fault. It's probably my cable's fault. But, you know, middle of the game, bam, kicks me off. Now, let's switch that to the Xbox One, all right? And it completely kicked me off Xbox Live, completely out, out of, you know, I was playing single player offline. I know they say they fixed all that, but even still, I, I got a feeling it's going to eventually turn into where it requires a lot more of that. So here we go. I'm playing a game insert Call of Duty title, whatever it is here, I get completely kicked off. Man, I got to wait to reboot the whole, you know, I, I just think it's going to be a mess. I want, I want they, they very definitively said today that, that very untrusting. Yeah, if you still get the kicked old, off while trusting, so you can have 24 hours of gameplay before you get that. Oh, well, and, and they've changed that all together. They're taking away the online requirement altogether. I want to play my sports titles. I want to play my shooters. And an occasional RPG, I guess, if I got time, which I really don't. And you know what? To be honest with you, I don't always want to get on Xbox Live and have to hide from people that I will not name in this video <laughs> and sign on. You know who I'm talking I about. Know who you're talking about. Hey, I want to play offline. I just want a video game console. I don't want a social media outlet on my TV. Well, I've got that. And and I agree. I mean, I don't want 
all the social media stuff on my console, it's but, so but it's it's so. I mean, yeah. Xbox Live is so far ahead of PlayStation on, uh, online. It's it's ridiculous. However, I hear they are making vast improvements to the PS Network on this next go. So because I mean, and just to download a, a simple system update, you know, back in the day, I mean, you had to go in you know, so many different files. Like, everything is hidden in PlayStation's... Look, if you were going to compare it, the operating system and the the live component of PlayStation and Xbox, as it is right now, to, let's say, education-wise, Xbox 360 has, like, a doctorate compared to PlayStation 2, not 2, but 3, having a junior high Seventh grade math whiz. Very good, uh, very good analogy. I will kill you because I will smother analogy. you in your sleep. Oh, I know you will. Look, Look I'm, I'm, I'm sorry because you had to watch hockey. All right, so you need to get to this hockey game. So what? Game. So what? In in closing, so we have one person that will buy it on that end. I'm going to buy it. I was already going to buy it anyways, but. So, we Wait, have, so you were just talking high praise the other night, man, for PS4. Come on. Are you going to I'm getting I both of them. Out. This is the same guy six months ago. I'm, I'm getting both of them. I'm I getting trust, both of them. I trust in you, Tyler Timms. I trust your word. And when you go out and say, okay, this one has failed me. I've got to go this way. I believe in it. And I believed you, and you led me to go on Amazon. Hey, and I'm, I'm still getting that PS4 that I pre-ordered. Like it's your main I'm still content. getting it. Yeah. Mine's switching that. But, but, but I'm swapping. But I will say, I will say, if it comes out on multi-platform games, if it's multi-platform games, I will get it for Xbox One yeah. instead of the... The PS4. I will probably just get exclusive games on PS4, like I did the PS3. Gentlemen, we will. I, I take, we'll see how it, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Hey, we'll see how it uh, how it looks going forward. But right now, I, I'm a, I'm in this camp. You looks guys, going forward. After we'll, we'll after look at it going today? forward. What what happened today? They made a statement. That, statement is fact. Nazis. All right, so we just got Tyler and Larry's opinion on the Xbox One DRM policy change. What is yours, Lee? You know, I, I have high hopes. I also have a little bit of mixed feelings because, I mean, finally they got what, you know, everybody was bitching about. They got it taken care of. You know, we don't have to be online all the time if you don't want to. It's basically the same thing as Xbox 360. But some of the blogs I've been reading have brought up some valid points. But for right now, from what you know, they're telling us, looks like we're going to get the best of both worlds, especially with you know um, being able to download, also having disc copies of things. I think it's going to be really cool, and uh, I'm not ready to jump back on the X, uh, on the Microsoft bandwagon yet. But it's getting a whole lot closer, especially with their launch titles that they're pushing right now. Yeah, I'd, and that's kind of what I was telling. Tyler and them, like, you know, before they made this announcement, PS4 was going to be the system that I bought most of my multi-platform titles on. I was going, that was going to be my main system, but, you know, now since this changed, that was really the, the one thing I was waiting on was the use game policy and the, and the DRM, uh, you know, always requiring you to be online. Uh, or at least once every 24 hours. That was the big thing that was holding me back personally because, not because I have online connection issues, but I don't think, you know, if I were to take my system out to my parents and they have pretty crappy DSL connection, um, you know, I, I don't think I should have to log in just to play the system. And right. Tyler brought up some really good points with the military. Apparently, Xbox is really loved in the military just for the LAN parties, and um, he was, you know, saying that a lot of people were mad they were going to be, uh, I guess, ostracized and not be able to get the the new Xbox system because so, of the, new, the the region lock, right? Right. Well, no, no, just because when they're like overseas, mm. uh, they can't get online. Like, especially oh, right. people in like Afghanistan and Iraq. On base, that was what they did was just big LAN parties since they couldn't get online. And that's huge for them. And 
not necessarily that I'm jumping back on the bandwagon, but I do love Xbox's controller a lot more than the PlayStation's, and um, I'm a big fan of the Xbox Live Arcade, and um, just their Xbox Live, it, to me it's a superior system to PlayStation's online model. It's just, PlayStation, you have to do a lot of searching um, it's not readily there or easy to find. I mean, yeah. for me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm familiar with Xbox Live. I'm familiar with the interface. Also, you know, a lot of things that they didn't really showcase at E3 that they showcased when they first announced that they were launching the Xbox One was a lot of the integration with. And look, I'm I'm an NFL fan. I'm a uh, I'm a football fan. So I'm in the fantasy football. Watching your stats real time while you're watching football on the Xbox One is awesome. I think it's it's a really cool uh, uh, feature. Being able to manage your fantasy team right there from Xbox One with voice commands with the Connect. You know, and, that, and that's another hangup that a lot of people have is that you know they wish that they didn't have to buy the Connect with it. But what they don't, you know, for me because I'm a big AV guy, is having the whole the the whole home theater integration going into it, you know, being able to control pretty much everything on, on in my home entertainment center, you know, just talking to the box is, is right. pretty cool. And then, you know, the the other huge thing is Microsoft Studios really, you know, pulled the gloves off for this. You know, I mean, some of the games that are coming out, like Quantum Break and, uh, you know, of course, 343 with the new Halo coming out next year, Titanfall, Rise is going to be a huge launch party title. I'm definitely going to get that one day one. Um, you know, all of these games that are coming out, you know, as first party, you know, uh, a lot of them new IPs for, for Microsoft, it, it's going to be, it's kind of the tipping point now that the DRM and the connectivity issue is out the window. Yeah, it definitely puts them on equal footing. I mean, now PS4 has the jump on them and they're definitely probably more systems pre-ordered now for PS4, but I think that oh. really you know, kind of took away some of the people's doubts to where they could go out and, and purchase a Xbox One without, you know, having the the doubts and issues about the policies. Speaking of doubts and <clears throat> speaking of doubts and issues, this is kind of what I've been reading around as far as people, you know, reposting on Facebook and things like that is one, you know, the big thing is, is everybody, you know, Microsoft's playing it out kind of like, oh, we hear you, we hear you. No, you're hearing that there are way more Sony pre-orders than micro, than, than uh, Xbox One pre-orders. So, in a way, yeah, you did hear us as consumers. You realize you're not going to, you don't have the jump on Sony that you thought you did. So, you're going to have to change something to win all these people back. And for a lot of people, they're too far gone now. that They felt that it was a slap in the face to gamers and they're not going to go back to, to, to Microsoft. Now, guys like me and you that are you know very familiar with the Microsoft products and really like it, we're hanging on their every word right now to see exactly where they're going to go with it. But you know, there was an article that came out that I read that a lot of people are worried about what this is going to do as far as are they still going to have limited or are they still going to have some sort of control basically with third party developers DRM where you know you sign in and then they can create like they're talking about creating some third party trade thing cuz basically if you download the game which they're still saying you're going to be able to download kind of like Steam and and things like that and even on PlayStation they're doing now you can't trade in or you can't loan that out or whatever which is fine but it's a trade off okay do I want to go stand in line at midnight at Best Buy or GameStop to get the new release or can I just go ahead and download it at mid and have it put ready for midnight? I think I read that same article, and I think that was talking about what was going to go probably be created if they, you know, kept that same model where, say, they made it all digital, where you basically um, put in the the disc and it, um, you know, showed that you had actually purchased the game, and then yeah. it downloads to your system or at least unlocks it where you can stream it. And I think what they were talking about was basically all the developers were going to create like a third, like kind of like an online store where you could go and trade in your games, maybe get credit and purchase, you know, stuff. But now since this policy has gone into place, I don't think you're going to see that happening. Um, you know, they're, Originally, they had a 
system in place to where you had like 10 people that you could share. It was called a family or something. You could share your games with that person. But right. I, I think they're going to end up taking that away and it's going to be more of the traditional sense of I buy a physical copy of the game. I want to give it to you, Lee, to borrow, you know, for two or three weeks to beat it and play it. And that won't be a problem. As far as downloading the games, they said that when you download the games off your system, you'll only be able to play them on that system. Right. Like it's it currently is with 360. You won't be able to share that with, right. with your friends so, I mean, like you were planning on being able to do. That that particular article, I thought it was much ado about nothing. I mean, you know, they're they're kind of going on a witch hunt kind of thing with, you know, like oh well, th- we're not going to be able to do this, that, and the other. Well, they, apparently this guy was like sold on all the features that they were trying to push before. But to me, you know, having the hard copy game and I can give it to my friend and be like, here, play this, whatever. You know, that's cool. But at the same time, I like the fact that if it's a game that I know I'm going to keep and everybody else is getting, I can go ahead and I mean. When Battlefield comes out, of course, you know, like, hey, let's download that. Everybody else is getting it. Let's go ahead and download it. Um, you know, it, it's in with the third party marketplaces, you look at, you know, people like, you know, a friend of mine brought this up to me in PC and you know, PC gaming. It's, you know, you've got uh, Steam, which is, you know, the quintessential like they push it out to everybody. But Steam has competition with like Origin from, you know, with, uh, I think that's EA that owns Origin, you know, they put on sales and stuff like that and give out free games and th- and different stuff like that. So you've got these third-party things that work like that. And, and I think what Microsoft is seeing is that they're going the exact same route as Steam. And everybody hated Steam when it first came out. They were saying that it was too expensive and all this other stuff and that the DRM was crap. But if you really, and the, the article that you're, that we're, I think we're both references talking about, World of Warcraft is that's a game that you you know everybody bought and basically the only thing that Blizzard ever does is just maintain accounts you know they don't meddle with anything else and that's really that what I think Xbox or Microsoft was talking about doing with the 24 hour check in and things like that it's just to make sure you're not like playing it going somewhere else and be like here play this and then you know I'm going to keep it or whatever yeah I think people have like an inherent fear about people looking over their shoulders and I, you know i think that that's something that's probably going to happen in the next five to ten years where we do go digital and i mean me and you can remember back when probably when the itunes and all that stuff came out you didn't want to get rid of your physical cds at first exactly. but now who uses physical cds you at, at the same time there's a lot of people that go and buy the cd still for the album artwork upload the stuff to the to the computer so they can have it in their iTunes. It's the same thing as I mean like, you know, some people are gonna want to buy these collectors editions of, you know, whatever these new third party or whatever these new uh you know next gen games are, you know, the special editions and limited editions with all the booklets and things. I mean you're a collector. I mean you know just as well as anybody else. But at the same time you get the game the disc based game you can still load it into onto your hard drive from from what i'm gathering it seems like you're going to have three options you can either just play it regular like on the disc you can load it onto your hard drive or you can download the whole game completely from you know a, a streaming service from from microsoft so you know it it makes sense to do that you know the limited editions in pc world there's not a whole lot of that going on anymore but for the diehard guys, I remember when Bioshock came out, Bioshock Infinite, they had the Songbird edition, and that was only for PC. And you know, a lot of people went for that. But you could also download it on Steam for the you know for the same price. So it's you know pick your poison kind of thing. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I you know I think it's some people are going to not like it. Uh, I've got a friend Ryan. He he really hates it. He was looking forward to actually just going digital with the system and you know i mean you still can but but i think he really liked the idea of being able to share games and stuff like that but they will um, eventually get to that point you know the the, i think that it will come to the point of they will still continue to make hard copy games but digital is going to take over you know just like itunes did you know the digital media and the same thing with amazon with their books and things like that you're going to see it more and more and more do do that, you know. So I think that I think it's going to lean that way, and everybody's going to end up being happy. And I and so for you people who collect like me, 
this bought us a little bit of time, but our, <laughs> but we're living on borrowed time because it is going to change in the next five or ten years. So be ready. But all right, Lee. Well, thanks for uh, for getting on here and, and give me your opinion on this. And um, I will talk to you soon, buddy. All right, man. Rip Tony Soprano. Yeah, that that was a damn shame, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, take it easy, man. See you, man.